Jones boys, the Jones boys, they built them a mill at the side of the hill, and they worked all night, and they worked all day, but they couldn't make the gosh darn sawmill pay. Sing high dum diddle um Johnny Jones, sing high dum diddle um Jimmy. That song, which Lord Beaverbrook heard as a sparked a realization on his part that the Miramichi had rich and vibrant folk song traditions that needed to be documented and celebrated. Accordingly, after World War II, he challenged his friend Louise Manny to perform that task. I'll get you the finest recording equipment available, he told her. And with the aid of that recording equipment and his funding, Manny set to work. She visited lumbermen, farmers, and others in the Miramichi at their homes to find out who knew songs. And through advertisements in newspapers and in movie houses, she persuaded Singer to participate in recording sessions at Newcastle's Legion Hall in November and December of 1947. Those recording sessions generated a huge wave of enthusiasm, and Manny's twice-weekly radio show brought folk into the studio to share their songs. At one point, when the show aired on Wednesdays, lumbermen would stop work so that they could listen. Inspired by a folk festival movement in the United States, Manny held the first Miramichi Folk Song Festival in September of 1958, which she saw as a venue for singers to perform their songs, often with local content and largely unaccompanied. Participants represented three cultures, Anglophone, Acadian, and Mi'kmaq. Singers and audience members who had experienced the old ways sang and listened enthusiastically. Wilmot MacDonald, master woods singer, opened and closed the festival each year with his rendition of the Lumberman's Alphabet. Sam Jago performed The Lost Babes of Halifax, which held the audience absolutely spellbound for the 15 or so minutes that it took to complete the song. Alan Kelly, known as the French Irishman in the lumber woods, rendered 400-year-old French complaints such as Le Jouy Ferrand, as well as local songs in English, including the steamer Alexander, which commemorated a 19th century drowning. Marie Hare sang each year, and her signature song became Round Her Mantle So Green. With the deaths of Louise, Manny, and those who had directly experienced the woods in the old ways, the festival began to evolve. So from 1970 to 1984, or 1983, the festival was directed by the late Maisie Mitchell. In 1984, Susan Butler became the director, and she's still the director, and under her directorship particularly songs with instrumental accompaniment became accepted more accepted and under the aegis of susan the festival became a week-long event featuring professional musicians including fiddlers and singer songwriters too what has stayed constant has been the celebration of a vibrant and wonderful Miramichi identity. A festival that has that has survived and blossomed for over 60 years has done something very right and has a lot to be proud of. And even if we can't be together at the Kin Center right now, let's celebrate. And now it's my great honor to declare the 63rd Miramichi Folk Song Festival officially open. But before I go, let's sing the very best, the very best. Makes no difference if you're from the north, the south, or east, or west. 
and to all you Miramichiers, I say without protest, I tell you that you are the